Hello fam, it's your girl Lady Heather Anderson here again for an encouraging word for you this week. I pray that last week was really, really good for you and everything went according to God's plan and his will in your life. And if not, just hold on because it is coming. And I pray that this week so far has been really good for you and blessed. I am so excited to be back with you. Um, last week we talked about uh, uh, obedience and walking in <laughs> obedience. And there's just so many things that I'm teaching. I'm trying to remember what this is. So uh, last week we talked about walking in obedience. And so we're going to jump right in because we have some good things for you this week. And so I hope you read those scriptures. I hope that you uh, went back and just basked in the presence of God according to his word and spoke those things over your life. Every single scripture that we give during the week, again, these are encouraging sessions. And so we want to encourage you to stay in the word. And so I pray that you are reading those scriptures over your life, praying those scriptures over your life, put your name in those scriptures, what God has declared for you. And I pray that God will ultimately answer every prayer that you have prayed. If you have additional questions in reference to the topics that we're talking about, don't hesitate to add them at the bottom in the comment field. Send us your praise reports. We pray for those that are backslidden and or those that need salvation. And so if you were the one that received Christ and or came back to the Lord in result of seeing our videos, go ahead and drop us a comment. We read every last one of them. And so we want to make sure that we are getting the word out to the masses, okay? Amen. So today we're going to encourage you and discuss rejecting defiance. And so we are in a topic of rebellion. We're talking about the spirit of rebellion and what that does to our spiritual life and how we can um, get away from that and some of the things that we can do. This is not the end all be all, okay? So whenever we finish finish this topic is not okay this is all I have to do to stay out of rebellion and I'm good you want to continually seek the face of God and and search your heart to make sure that you are not operating with that spirit but today we're going to talk about rejecting defiance and defiance in in a um, definition perspective means bold disobedience like you just boldly disobedient um, to stand up when ordered to sit down to talk and challenge um, those in authority over you open resistance is what this word means so no matter what the other person can see um, the, the trail that you're going down you are openly resisting that and boldly rejecting it um, kind of puts me in, in remembrance of a child and their parent right so you got an 18 year old maybe they finished college and they don't uh, finish high school and they don't want to go to college you know some of our some of the people in this upcoming generation they want to go to work right out of high school they want to make money they want to save money they want to get a car they want to move out of their parents house they want to be grown right so let's say you know we're talking about defiance so let's say you got a teenager just finished high school don't want to go to college and so you say okay you want to get a job okay let's get a job i'm going to show you how to um, save the money and balance your books so that you can be successful when you go out there and if they was like my mother it was when you leave here you're not coming back so if you want to be grown you got to be sure that you know what you're doing right and so we try to help them and mold them and teach them um, the things that they need to do let's say this child comes back and all of a sudden they got a brand new idea. I got a roommate, they're gonna pay half of everything and I got my half, so we leaving now, right? They just openly rejecting and defying everything that you guys talked about. And that is how we are with God sometimes. He tells us what we need to do. He might even show us where we're going and we just openly think that, okay, we, can, we got a better way, God, I can do this easier. You know, and we start talking to people and sharing what the Lord is saying to us and allow people to talk us out of what God is saying. And then we end up defying everything that he has told us to do. So we're going to talk about that and how to reject that spirit of defiance. 
And it's uh, the other thing that I want to talk about that it is, it, it is sheer arrogance. And that's where that comes from. When you think or we think, I'm going to add myself to this because I'm not perfect, right? But when we think that we know what we're doing, that is sheer arrogance. And that's what defiance operates in. It, it operates in arrogance and pride. And so let's go to Jeremiah uh, 48 and 26. I want you to write these scriptures down and I'm not going to go through the whole story. We'll do a back uh, backdrop at very high level because these encouragement videos are not that long, but it's, a, it's long enough to make you go back and study it for yourself and let the Lord minister to you. Jeremiah 48 and 26 says, make him drunk because he exalted himself against the Lord. Moab shall wallen in his vomit, and he shall also be in derision. It's not division, it's derision, D-E-R-I-S-I-O-N. And what that means, uh, simply in plain words, is that Moab was going to be made out of a laughing stock. That's what the Lord is saying. And so you can go back and read this about uh, the word of judgment over Moab and it, he, the, Moab was like um, uh, to be a cousin to Israel, right? So there's a couple of scriptures I'll give you that you can reference back to, but it, it they feared Israel um, as they came from Egypt towards Canaan. And if you check out Numbers, the book of Numbers 22, 3 and 4, you will see where um, Balak, uh, king of Moab, was uh, uh, hired to or hired Balaam to curse Israel when Israel came into Canaan. So sometimes uh, Moab attended uh, or attacked, I'm sorry, he attacked and ruled over them and you'll find that over in judges 3 12 through 14 when you read the entire story of what god said to moab and how they were um uh against israel and it wasn't the will of god but going down to verse 26 in jeremiah where it says thus was the reason for judgment when you get to verse 26 this is the reason that God judged Moab, the pride of Moab. When God said something, they didn't adhere to it because they thought they knew more. And so they had pride. And when they thought they were better than Israel, so the Lord said, the horns of Moab is cut off and his arm is broken. And that's when he said, make him, a, make him drunk because he, is, because he exalted himself against the Lord. So he'll be a laughing stock. How do you exalt yourself against the Lord? When you exalt yourself against the Lord, that means, and we just said this, that you allow pride to come in. You think you know more. Let me tell you this. And if you don't know, you will know today. That is what got the, the devil kicked out of heaven. It's because he thought that he would be as great as God. He got prideful and he and he wanted people to worship him. And so him and all of the angels that decided, yeah, I'm gonna go this route. This is a better deal. They got kicked out of heaven. And so you don't want to operate in a spirit of pride that will make you defiant to the word of God. So we want to uh, reject that spirit and it can come on easy in small ways. You typically hear people say things like, I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this forever. I know what to do. Take it from me. And when they do that, it, it takes away from God as if there's no, no, no way that you can grow, right? So because somebody has been doing a certain thing for 10 or 15 or 20 or 40 years, do you mean to tell me that there's no room for growth? Absolutely not. And so when we get into small things like that, you know, I know what I'm doing. I'm the subject matter expert. Then we don't allow God to come on the inside and grow us to the capacity that he wants to take us. Because where you are right now is not where God wants you to be. He intends to grow you further. But you got to be sure that when you uh, when you want to uh, do the things of God, that you don't become prideful and defiant um, so that God cannot use you because then your ear, your spiritual ears will become deaf to the things of God when he is trying to show you, this is the path that I want you to go on. And, so, and many times God will show us 
where we're going, but he won't show us the transportation that's going to take us there. Why? Because he knows us. He made us. And so we're human. And if we saw all of the things that we have to go through to get to where God is trying to take us, we would probably mess that up. I'm thinking 12 times out of 10, we would mess that up if God showed us, you're going to go through this issue. You're going to have to overcome this. And then this is going to come upon your body. And this person is going to die in your family. And this child is going to go wayward. If God shared all of those things with us, that is on our journey, we would become defiant. We wouldn't want to go down that path. And so, but I thank God that he shows us the promise. And as long as we have have faith in him to know that what he said he's going to bring it to pass then we can obtain the thing that God has predestined for us to attain obtain so we want to shut that spirit down and block it from being able to come uh, into us and take root in who we are and we're going to talk about next week the spirit of insubordination because that is what defiance does defiance will get you in the position of being insubordinate. So we're going to talk about that. So I encourage you today to reject the spirit of defiance. You want to read those scriptures in um, Judges. You want to go back to Jeremiah. You want to study Moab and, and, and Israel and see what that relationship was like and how they and how Moab disobeyed the word of the Lord. And then when you do that, you want to pray that God will keep you from the spirit of defiance. And you want to reject it. And you want to ask God to cleanse your heart and make you new for him. Let's pray, why don't we? I encourage, I, I pray that you have been encouraged this week and I want to pray for those that don't know God and want to receive him. And then I want to pray for the backslider because the word of the Lord says that he is married to the backslider. As long as you have breath in your body, you have an opportunity to come to Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this word right now. I pray, God, that those that listen, Father, have been blessed by your word and, and are hungry to go and dig in and research your word and hear from you. Father, I pray that you would make the word alive to them, change their lives, change their situation, change their path that they're going on, Father. For you declared in your word that the steps of a good man are ordered by you. And so I pray, Father, that as you have ordered their steps, Father God, that they will come in alignment with what you've ordered and do what it is that you would have them to do. We reject the spirit of defiance. We reject the spirit of boldly disobeying you, Father. And we pray, God, that you will touch our heart, creating us a new heart, Father. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that we pray and we say amen. If you do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I am a sinner. I repent of my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. If you just said that prayer, then I believe that you receive the Lord Jesus in your heart. And today is a brand new day, not only for today, but for the rest of your life. If you are a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I have backslidden. I have walked away from your word. Take me back, Father. Forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I accept you back in my heart in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord will do mighty and wonderful things in your life. Again, this is your girl, Lady Heather Anderson, here at Greater Faith Ministries International in Douglasville, Pennsylvania. If you're in the area, come visit with us where the pastor is not only then the honorable Pastor Frank Anderson. You ask why he's honorable because I honor him. All right, we will be back next week to talk about the spirit of insubordination, and we will see you then. Love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed.